Hey everyone, welcome back to Sunday School. Uh, first and foremost, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of what we did for the first four weeks where we talked about the crucifixion and resurrection stories with the different Gospels, learning a little bit about every Gospel and how there are some similarities and differences in the different stories. So for this season, um, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to last yet, um, but it will at least go through May 20th or the 17th. That's when, um, that Sunday through when we know we're definitely not going to be in worship. So it'll probably be four or five weeks long. We're going to talk about the different Bible characters that have been in some sort of level of like quarantine or, um, Maybe they've been alone or they've been in a situation um, that maybe we can get something out of their experience. So, um, I just kind of thought that was an interesting and unique like challenge for myself to find different Bible um, stories and characters that have been in a similar, obviously not in the exact situation that we are in. Obviously, this is the first time that's ever happened, but there are like situations where people have either been like cast aside, they've had to stay in their own form of like isolation, they've maybe been in fear by themselves. So we'll just kind of see where this takes us. But um, I wore a special shirt today to show you the story that we're doing. Woo woo! It is Noah's Ark. So I'm gonna need you to go get your Bible. If not, I need you to pause me so you're ready to get your Bible, and we're going to go ahead and start. So, Noah's Ark is a story that almost all of us are familiar with, whether you learned it when you were little through a vacation Bible school or just from starting your own Bible reading. You know, we all are at different places. Um, the Noah's Ark story is quite common. And it spans through, if nothing else, with within Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So, if you actually read Noah's Ark, it can be actually a little darker than what you might remember um, from, like, a vacation Bible school or the ways in which you might remember it from um, the being in a Sunday school lesson before when you were little. So, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but, you know, as far as Noah's Ark goes, like, there's a place in Kentucky where you can go and, um, like, see exactly maybe how large Noah's Ark was, and, you know, that sounds cool and neat, um, but regardless, um, we know that, that Noah's Ark, whether Noah was a real person, whether this is a story that was passed down through generations and centuries to help us understand more about God and the ways in which um, God was working in the world. Um, we do know that um, there was a large flood just like through like history and through like looking back at um, like the ways in which we have like geography and um, oh my gosh what's the word I'm looking for? Geology and, you know, like, going through, like, different layers and stuff of, like, the earth and you can see, like, sea levels and stuff. We know that there was many, many years ago, um, thousands, maybe millions of years ago, um, there was a large flood that flooded the earth and um, over 300 different, like, faith traditions or, like, fables or stories recognize um, some sort of like massive flood um, story so we do know that there is a lot of like truth to this again um, in the story you're gonna read that Noah was like 600 years old we don't know if 600 really means like 45 here in like what we would consider to be old um, you know 600 sounds like really old maybe it, back then it was like again like maybe it was my age and people didn't live very long after that. Um, but not we don't get hung up on the details. Um, what we remember is that um, there is a story to teach us about God. 
So what does it say about God and what does it say about how God was working in the world and through the Noah and his family? So in the beginning of the story, we know that God calls out to Noah and tells him to start building this ark. Even though, you know, say you were to look up in the sky, there's not a cloud, um, no raindrops falling. He builds it for many, many, many years. Um, people start to think he's crazy. And then he goes and um, he needs to collect two of every animal for reproduction's sake. And then he takes his family in and they're supposed to stay in the ark. So I want you to get out your Bible and I want you to kind of think about this part of the story right when Noah and his family is getting in the ark. This is Genesis chapter 7 verse 14 through 17. I want you to read that and then what I want you to do is think about nothing else we know that Noah went into the ark and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights and there was a flood for 40, 40 days 40 nights it's a very common theme in the Bible for something to go on for 40 days and 40 nights so we know that Noah and his family are trapped in this ark for this amount of time. They don't have internet. They don't have cell phones. They don't have TikTok. They can't go outside. They can't ride bikes. They can't take walks. They are stuck in an ark with animals like that would just be the worst with their family for 40 days so it's over a month so it's just about the time that we've been in maybe yeah just about the time we've been in quarantine so some of you have not left your house or your neighborhood for that long so just think about what Noah might have been feeling and sensing at that point do you think he was exhausted you think he was relieved? Like, oh, I'm so glad this flood came so people didn't think I was a crazy person. Do you think he was, like, ready to get off the ark at the end of it? So, when the rain stops, they try to figure out what to do next. Ultimately, we know that Noah and his family and all those animals are the only thing that lasts on the earth. God kind of needed a do-over with some things. Um, so God had decided at that point to flood the earth, get rid of some of the things that needed to get rid of, and start over again with Noah and his family. Obviously, it's a pretty big difference than what's going on here because with COVID-19 and the coronavirus, we know that God is not trying to get rid of anyone or this is not the punishment for some sort of sin that we have in our world. Um, it's just a terrible virus. So that's a big difference between these two stories. But um, at this point, we do know that God in the Old Testament is pretty angry at this point. <laughs> so, in chapter 8, I want you to look in your Bibles and I want you to look at verse 3. I want you to read from verse 3 just down through verse 5. Just Chapter 8, verses 3 through 5. 
So now after they had the flood, they still had to wait a long time. 150 days, the waters decreased. And in the seventh month, on the 17th day, the ark came to rest on the Ararat Mountains, which is somewhere in Turkey. I looked it up. Seven months in this ark. If I have to spend seven months in my apartment, I can't even, I can't even tell you. Then what happens? You're probably familiar with this part of the story. If, if you know this story, Noah sends out some birds to kind of see what's going on. Eventually a dove comes back and has an olive branch. And um, that's how they know that there is some sort of semblance of dry land and that the waters were going down and that there is an earth on the other side of this flood which is very exciting and eventually they all get out of the ark and start the world over again so what does this teach us about quarantine what does this teach us about God I mean in some senses the Noah story is not too terribly different than what we're experiencing and the fact that this is probably the most like similar story do we have than like what's going on and to think that these people are like trapped in this physical space and they cannot get out because of something that's out of their control is happening around them in the world. Obviously, we know there's some pretty big differences, but I think it's a hard thing for, for Noah and his family to have to deal with, especially when they get off the ark. We don't hear a lot about what's going on during the ark, while they're in the ark. We just know a lot about what's happening outside. We don't hear about how they're feeling inside, though I do imagine it was if nothing else, very smelly. And I, to me, that just would be miserable. But eventually, when they get off the ark, God is still there. And God has still showed up in some way. God is still pleased with Noah because he has Noah has done what God has asked and God creates a covenant with Noah and from this there are so many blessings there's a lot of terrible, terrible hardships during Noah's situation where he was on the ark and a lot of bad things that were happening around. But eventually we know that God still created something good out of it. Yes, we know that it was God that asked Noah to build the ark and to be faithful to what God was saying and ultimately that fared well for them but that aside because again that's not the same as what's happening here we know that God didn't ever leave Noah God was there before the flood God was there during the flood and God was still there after the flood. And I think that's something that we can remember for ourselves. That God has been there before the coronavirus. God is with us right now in it. In the moments where we feel like we're about to go crazy. And the moments where we feel mad and sad and disappointed. 
all the things that I imagine Noah felt as well. And when this is all over, whether it's in the end of May, if we see this into the fall, if we're looking at 2021, no one knows that God is still there and that the promise that Noah and God had after this story was that God would continue to remain faithful to the earth and to God's people. And I think that we can remember that for ourselves here, that God is faithful no matter what. Doesn't mean that life is fair. Doesn't mean that bad things don't happen. Doesn't mean that being a Christian means that you have a better life than anyone else. Nope. Never says that in the Bible. But what it does say is that when you feel down or when you're crying or when you're stressed, that God is there with you in that emotion and that pain and that joy when you feel joy. And that is God's promise. God's promise is not to keep you from pain or from suffering. Never says that in the Bible. Show me if it says that somewhere. But God says, I will be with you always. And that's pretty amazing. A God that never abandons us, never forsakes us, continues to show up, continues to forgive us, to love us when we are very unlovable. So... Let's remember that from the story of Noah. God was there. God showed up. And God continues to show up for us now. In ways in which we aren't even seeing at this moment. And maybe it will take us years to even see how God was showing up in this time. Let's pray. Most gracious God, when Noah was on the ark, he must have felt such a wide range of emotions from being upset to frustrated to maybe even a little smug that this whole ark thing had worked out just the way God had said. But God, you were still there. You never left Noah and his family. You didn't abandon them in their time of need. In their time of wondering what was going on out in the world. You were there before the flood and you were there after the flood. So God, you're with us here now. Let us be mindful of that. Let us remember that you are a God that is so much bigger than the coronavirus. You are a God that is healing. You are a God that loves us and never forsakes us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.